is going to be a quick video review of the parts of the brain. Remember that when we learned about them, we learned about them in essentially three layers. The first layer of the brain we consider to be our evolutionary oldest. So it's the part that keeps us alive. It controls all of our life-sustaining functions. As we look at the different parts of what's called the brain stem, which is the main part of our layer one, we have um, the medulla, the pons, and the reticular formation, which are all part of what we consider the brain stem. We'll throw the thalamus and the cerebellum into layer one as well, but I'll talk about those in a second. So just as a reminder, the medulla is what extends up from the spinal cord. Um, it's the base of the brain stem and it controls mainly our heartbeat and our breathing. It also controls any of our reflexive responses like vomiting or our gag reflex or any of those things. Sitting on top of the medulla is the pons. The pons is important for a variety of reasons. It actually works specifically with the cerebellum in motor movements. It also plays an important role in both sleep and dreams. The reticular formation then is a bundle of nerve fibers that runs through the brain stem, so the medulla and the pons, and it's important for our arousal. It's what keeps us um, awake and alert and all of those things, so it essentially connects those parts together. The thalamus is another important part of layer one. It sits on top of the brain stem and it receives all incoming sensory information with the exception of smell. It's important because it directs that information to wherever it needs to go in the brain to be processed. So kind of like a computer processing chip or um, the guy on the runway of an airport, which is directing all the planes where to go, that's what our thalamus does. So it's a really important part of our brain as well. The cerebellum then, we also consider to be part of our layer one. Um, again, it's not part of the brainstem. It's referred to as the little brain, and it's attached to the back of the brainstem, so it's at the back of our head, and it helps coordinate voluntary motor movement um, and balance. So things like playing the piano, riding a bike, walking, those things are all coordinated by the cerebellum. That's really the end of our layer one. So moving on to our layer two brain parts, um, we're really looking at the limbic system. The limbic system is extremely important because um, it exists between the brainstem and the cerebral hemispheres. It's considered um, our emotional center and it's also involved in any of our motivated behavior like eating, drinking, and sex. For our purposes, we need to know three parts of the brainstem. Remember ha, hypothalamus, amygdala, and hippocampus. This image also includes the pituitary gland, which is not part of the limbic system, but actually does work really closely with the hypothalamus. So our amygdala is a little tiny brain part, which exists um, right here at the end. It's the little circular piece, and that's really important for our emotions, such as rage and fear, and we also know that it plays an important part in our emotional memories. Hippocampus, you guys remember when we taught about the hippocampus and the memory unit, and when we talk about it in class, um, we always say you'd remember if you saw a hippo on campus. So this is tied to our memory, um, specifically short-term to long-term memory and emotional memories. And that's why it's part of the limbic system because the limbic system is important in emotion. The hypothalamus is probably the most complex piece of the limbic system. It's involved in a variety of things like eating, drinking, and sexual behavior. It's our regulator of all of those things. It controls the endocrine system um, via the pituitary gland or the master gland, which controls our hormonal systems. It's also referred to as the pleasure center or the reward center of our brain. So remember when we talked about the studies with the rats um, and the pleasure lever and all of those things from your book. Another way to kind of just take a look at the limbic system would be right here within this diagram. So it just kind of is a way to pull together layer one and layer two. We can see within this how our layer one um, connects to our layer two and then how they all work together. So on the left-hand side in the image, you can see how it all works together as part of the brain. And as the, on the right side, you can see if we took a slice out of the brain and we were looking at the internal features. So I would take a few minutes if I were you and just kind of take a look at the brain parts as well as the tiny little summaries of the brain parts as they, as they kind of come together into layer one and layer two. Part of our brain then would be considered our layer three and that's where we're looking at our lobes and our cortical areas.
um, referred to as our cerebral cortex. Our cerebral cortex is the very thin outer layer. Um, what we have as part of our cerebrum, which would be both hemispheres, all of that gray matter area, would be our frontal lobe, which, writes, which is right here at the front. Um, next to our frontal lobe, we have our parietal lobe. Uh, next to that, which is at kind of the back of our brain, we have our occipital lobe. And then wrapping up into the center, we have our temporal lobe. Remember when we did those drawings in class? Clearly, this diagram is not as great as the drawings that we did in class. But remember that at the back of the frontal lobe, we have the motor cortex. Um, the motor cortex is important for our motor movement, our voluntary motor, motor movement. Right next to that, um, yet in our parietal lobe, is our sensory or somatosensory cortex, which is important for registering our sensory touch. I'll show you an image of that in a second. As we go back into the occipital lobe, we know that there's a region back there um, called the visual cortex. And then when we wrap up into the temporal lobe, we know that there's the auditory cortex, which is important for hearing. There are also areas tied to smell and taste, which would be our olfactory areas and our gustatory senses as well, which would be taste. Within our frontal lobe, so going back to that, we know that we have Broca's area, which is important for our ability to speak. Um, and then in our temporal area, we have Wernicke's area, which is important for our language comprehension and expression. So that's a lot of stuff kind of in this brain region. We also know that any of the areas of the cortex that aren't tied to sensory or motor functions or that haven't been named, that haven't been identified yet, these are all of our association areas. So all of that gray matter area. And that's really important for our highest level of mental functions like learning, remembering, thinking, planning, um, even language, things like um, our sense of humor or understanding sarcasm, those are all processed in those gray matter areas known as the association areas. About 75 to 80% of the brain is composed of our association areas, which would be important for our, all of our higher level functioning. Another image then, just so you can kind of see the motor and the sensory cortex. Remember when I drew them, I said that they're side by side and that based on how much area is tied to it, that would be how much area is important for um, our sensation, right? So how much we feel or um, how much we maybe don't feel, so how sensitive that area is. So you can just kind of take a second and look at that. And then our final area, this is just a way to more specifically highlight um, things like Broca's area and Wernicke's area, just as they exist in our layer three functioning. Keep in mind that um, you should take a look at um, all of our practice sheets, specifically, let me pull it up for you here, specifically the brain application questions. So taking a look and making sure that you go over this, if you can understand these situations and get the correct answers from them, then you should feel just fine moving forward in truly understanding the function of the different brain parts.